Freakout is a KMG Frisbee owned and operated by Fiesta Shows. This is an intense pendulum ride that is arguably the best attraction in the Fiesta Shows ride lineup, and it compares quite favorably to the other Frisbees out there. In this video, I will review Freakout and explain why this flat ride should be sought out by fans of pendulum rides. KMG specializes in wild, traveling flat rides, and Freakout is no different. Freakout is actually the most compact Frisbee model that KMG produces. Compare that to their larger Afterburner, Vortex, or XXL models that have larger footprints, heights, speeds, and capacities. However, Freakout should not be underestimated. One of the biggest differences between Freakout and KMG's other Frisbees is that Freakout swings from the front to back as opposed to left to right. This results in the ride typically swinging right over the midway, which is a really exciting visual both on and off ride. The Freakout owned by Fiesta Shows arrived around 2005 and has been a staple ever since. The ride looks just okay by day, but it looks fantastic at night with all the lights. The attraction has lights on the supports and gondola, which is absolutely mesmerizing to watch. One funny touch is that this particular freakout had a Barney the Dinosaur plush tied onto the support column for years. I have no idea why it was there, but I noticed it at several points over the years. However, this Barney was no longer there when I last rode freakout in 2021. With Universal also removing their Barney the Dinosaur show, this may be the end of the purple dinosaur's presence at both amusement parks and carnivals. Rest in peace, Barney. Rest in peace. But back to Freakout. Whenever the one owned by Fiesta Shows appears at a fair, it usually has the longest line. And that's understandable given that the ride only seats 16 riders per cycle and also features a long ride duration. To counteract this, the ride operator working Freakout is almost always hustling to load and unload the ride as quickly as possible. Guests are allowed to throw their belongings on the central platform, which allows for some really neat views of the pendulum if you have your camera rolling. And the restraints are simple over-the-shoulder restraints with no seat belts. These restraints start high above the head of riders, so you have plenty of clearance between the over-the-shoulder restraint and your shoulders to feel the ride's airtime. As the platform begins to lower slowly, Freakout begins spinning and rocking at a snail's pace. Once the platform is fully lowered, you start spinning at a pretty good clip. In general, Freakout is more about the swinging than the spinning. But the spinning is at its most intense at the very start of the ride. It actually causes some laterals during this point in the ride, and at the same time, the arm is just slowly rocking back and forth. After roughly 30 seconds of fast spinning and minimal swinging, the spinning suddenly turns into a slow rotation, and then you start swinging higher. The swings build up to the ride's maximum height, and these moderate swings give some weak floater airtime, but it's just the appetizer. On the max swings, you get some really nice airtime. If you're at the highest point facing the ground, you get launched up into the over-the-shoulder restraint. The airtime isn't as sustained as the larger frisbees like the Zamperla Giant Discoveries you often find at the Six Flags parks. Rather, this airtime is abrupt and forceful ejector airtime. The airtime is less powerful if you're not facing the ground, but the rotation ensures that everyone gets to experience the ride's best airtime multiple times. Complementing this airtime is the powerful positive G's on the downswings. The forces feel like they'll try to rip your legs off. Freakout's max swings start with the aforementioned slow rotation. However, after roughly 30 seconds of those max swings, you hear the ride rev and then you start spinning at a fast rate, just like you did at the start of the ride. Because you're rapidly rotating at the apex of each swing, it's almost guaranteed that everyone will get popped out of their seat on every single max swing. Plus, the spinning on the downswings results in a disorienting blend of centripetal forces and positive Gs. Few frisbees can combine both forces simultaneously as well as Freakout does. After 45 seconds of insanity, Freakout starts slowing down. The entire ride cycle takes roughly 2.5 minutes and the different phases of the ride result in a unique mix of forces to keep me coming back. The only downside with Freakout is the seating orientation. I far prefer the Frisbees with the outward facing seats. I think the visuals are more exciting when you get that unobstructed view of the ground or sky rather than staring at other riders. So what I rate Freakout? I would give this Frisbee an 8.5 out of 10. 
This is an intense and disorienting flat rod that delivers a little bit of everything. You get some laterals, good paws of G's, and some nice ejector airtime combined with a long and satisfying ride cycle. While there are certainly a few frisbees I prefer over Freakout, there are not many, and it's easily one of the best rides owned by Fiesta Shows. So those are my thoughts on the Fiesta Shows Freakout. What are your thoughts on this ride? Have you experienced a KMG Freakout? I would love to hear your thoughts about this frisbee or any of them down below. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there will be a lot more roller coaster and Muse Park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.